Hey guys, what is up and I welcome you to a new episode of League of Myths. Be sure to throw in a like if you do end up enjoying this episode. And also to stay tuned to the very end for another Phoenix giveaway. But without any further ado, let us go straight to the first myth. This myth submitted by Dominic, if you charm or pull Teemo while he is invis from his passive, will it reveal him? So there are of course three test case scenarios, Ari, Blitz, Thresh. In the first one with Ari, as I charm him, it is forcing him to walk right to me, therefore revealing him. Testing it with Blitzcrank as well, because the champion himself is not right clicking and walking around, Blitzcrank is just simply repositioning him. But either way, it still reveals Teemo. And the final test case scenario with Thresh, this one I will be testing his Q and his Flay. And just as we suspect, the Q does end up revealing Teemo even though he's technically not walking. And just for testing purposes, using Flay on Teemo once again also revealing him. So we can conclude that any form of movement will cancel Teemo's stealth even if it's not himself doing the movement. Jumping to the second myth, if Baron knocks up an enemy, can Yasuo ult them from that knockup? So we all know how Yasuo's ultimate usually only works if the champion is knocked up by either his own ability or an allies. But what happens if a neutral foe ends up doing the knockup? Can Yasuo follow up with his ultimate? So of course in order to test this we wait till 15 minutes, start fighting Baron and just as the knockup is there on the ground, the Alistar walks on top, gets knocked up, but it says must be airborne as I'm trying to use my ultimate on the Alistar. Therefore concluding that I cannot use Baron's knockup for my ultimate. Jumping to the next myth, what if an ally Anivia uses her wall on an allied champion? Can Yasuo use his ultimate off of that? So if you do cast Anivia's wall on top of a champion, it will displace them very briefly. And Yasuo's ultimates can work off of displacements such as that. And as you can see, as the Anivia puts the wall down on Nautilus, who is on the same team, it displaces him and for some reason, Yasuo can use his ultimate on him. Which is a little odd because we've thought this whole time that the knockup must be done from either Yasuo himself or an ally on the same team. The next myth submitted by Jay Lee. If Braum and Lee Sin dash to each other at the same time, where do they end up? So for this one, we simply position the Braum and the Lee Sin away from each other. They both use their W and you can see that they both just simply switch positions. But what if the Lee Sin uses his W midway through Braum's W? Where will he go then? Well, as you can see, just as Braum is mid W and Lee Sin uses his own W, he simply goes to the position that Braum was in his leap midway just as Lee Sin uses his own W. And just for testing purposes, we also did the vice versa. And since Lee Sin's W is so fast, it's a little hard to time, but we can judge from what we saw here that it pretty much acts the exact same way as the previous clip. The final myth of this episode by myself that I want to test out is Can Yasuo dash and use his flash before the dash actually finishes and hits the champion and still deal the damage? So this one is pretty straightforward but the results are very interesting. So what I want to test is if I use my dash on a champion or a minion and I flash before the dash finally connects, what happens? And as I slow it down you can see just as I used my E on the Alistair, I flashed away before it connected and it did not do the damage but it still put the mark onto him, not letting me dash on him again even though it did not even connect. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of League of Myths. Please do throw in a like down below if you did enjoy this episode and you can even submit your own myth. And you can do this by either commenting under this video, tweeting at RedMercyLOL of course on Twitter or on my Facebook fan page RedMercyLOL as well. But on to the Phoenix giveaway. For this episode, I will be giving away their amazing mouse, the Phoenix Nasita, and their mouse pad, the Demora. These products are quite honestly very, very well made. So it is a great honor for me to be able to give away these products thanks to the sponsorship. In order for you to have a chance to win the sweet mouse and mouse pad, all you have to do is like this video, follow myself and Phoenix on Twitter, and simply tweet at RedMercyLOL and Phoenix, and simply just say why you want to win, and also make sure to include the hashtag PhoenixRedMercy. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, good luck to everyone participating in the giveaway, and I hope to see you for the next episode. Peace!